let's start uh, with the pandemic. Um, a lot of surgeries, a lot of treatments have all been put on hold as countries around the world deal with the pandemic. Where do you see that evolving? How close are we to getting back to business as normal? Alex, thanks for having me. Let me say, uh, first of all, that uh, our uh, business is obviously uh, focused on, on innovation and, and medicines, and we've been paying close attention to the pandemic. We have seen last year uh, some slowdown in the number of visits and access to patients, uh, to medical sites. I must say, uh, in the second part of the year, hospitals in uh, the United States in particular, but many countries around the world have become uh, more organized in terms of seeing patients. And we've seen gradually a recovery of volumes of visits and uh, and treatments. So that's very positive. And from our perspective, we've been able to continue to deliver medicines to patients throughout the year. We never stopped working. Uh, and uh, obviously the focus now is uh, accelerating uh, the distribution of vaccines to continue to make progress with the pandemic. Dr. Dr. Kaforio, has the pandemic changed the way you think about where you want to position your business? You, you talked in your presentation yesterday about kind of innovation and, and that's led to a lot of people thinking about where you are likely to move your M&A focus. Has COVID changed your thinking? Well, let me say, first of all, our strategy is very clear. It is about innovation and it is about growth. We are a growth company and we have a unique strategy for innovation. A couple of things I would say. First of all, COVID has really highlighted the importance of technology in accelerating progress in our field. And we've been making investments in digital for the last few years and that really uh, paid off for us. Last year, we were able to maintain our operations going and uh, make progress with clinical research in our portfolio thanks to the ability to use technology remotely and continue to advance our program. So that's really important. Going forward, we will continue to be focused on areas of very high and met medical need. Our focus is in oncology, hematology, immunology, and cardiovascular disease. These are all areas where the met medical need is very, very high, and we have great science, which we are advancing in terms of new medicines. How far along are you in those conversations? And when can the market realistically think about some kind of deal? Well, first of all, let me say the last year has been really important for Bristol MySquib. We've established a strong foundation for the company as an innovation leader, a growth company. Today, we have strong businesses and we're launching many new medicines. So one of the things that I've discussed is really the acceleration of the renewal of our portfolio with new medicines representing up to 30% of the company by 2025. At the same time, uh, we've been very clear always that business development and acquisitions represent an important part of our strategy, which we couple with our internal R&D efforts. And so last year, for example, we just closed uh, an important deal, the acquisition of myocardia. They gave us access to Mavacampton, a really innovative medicine. Uh, we uh, highlighted our uh, potential for that medicine yesterday. We see big sales above $4 billion for that asset alone. And so going forward, I see us continuing to invest in external innovation, bolt-on mid-size acquisitions are, are an important part of our strategy. And we have the resources to uh, act when we see an asset that is really interesting for us. Um, you're not going to be paying out um, the, the CVR, the CVR um, that was associated with Celgene, the contingent value rights. Um, that was what six billion. You paid out a two billion, um, or you backed a two billion buyback. Are buybacks more important to you now, or do you think M and A is more important? I'm curious how you're going to be distributing that money, or how you're thinking about that money. Well, let me say, first of all, we are in a position of really strong financial flexibility as a company. So what we announced yesterday uh, is an incremental $2 billion share buyback. We also announced an acceleration of repayment of $4 billion in debt into this year. That has the objective of continuing to strengthen our balance sheet and provide us with incremental financial flexibility. The, the central pillar 
of our capital allocation strategy has been and will continue to be business development to bring new innovation into the company and continue to strengthen growth. So the announcement we made yesterday is very consistent with our capital allocation strategy. Um, let's talk about uh, the future in terms of the U.S. specifically, and I'm curious as to what you expect out of a Biden administration in terms of drug pricing. Also, we've seen a lot of CEOs come out and stand very much against more political donations. And I'd love to get your take on where Bristol Myers is going to stand with that. Sure. Well, f starting with uh, uh, starting with uh, drug pricing, let me say again, as an innovation company, a growth company, we. Uh, we look at that as an important priority. And um, we have, uh, we're looking forward to partnering with the new administration uh, because the issues that we can discuss and, and advance together are really important. There is an issue in the US with the affordability of uh, medicines for patients. And I, we believe that there are policies that can be put in place that continue to support the important innovation that our industry and our company bring forward at the same time as we make it easier for patients to have access to medicine. So I look forward to beginning that dialogue with the new administration. With respect to your question on political contributions, obviously we have uh, some very uh, transparent guidelines on, on how we think about that. We have supported uh, policymakers from from both sides on important policy issues for, for our industry. At this point, we have decided to uh, pause on political contributions. Okay, that's interesting. How, how long do you think that will last for? Do you think you are going to? Is this is this a wholesale rethinking of the way that you are going to approach this? Um, and do you think it's something that is going to be replicated across the whole industry? I, once you start this, is this something that's going to become a permanent feature? Well, let me just say uh, that, you know, the events of the last few days are, are uh, really sad events. They're important events. I think they deserve all of us to step back and, and really think about our, our positions and policies broadly. Uh, at this point, we've made a decision to pose. We're clearly having an important discussion internally as a company of what we want to do uh, going forward. And I, I'm sure that's happening in many companies uh, in the industry.